Lord, I give thy glory today, the glory due unto his name. God has been so good to us. You don't have anybody that's willing to testify to how good God has been. Hallelujah. He woke us up this morning, Lord. He gave us the use and activity of our limbs. We're able to move about. So we owe God all the praise. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Anybody glad today? Amen. Even though it's overcast, but guess what? God is still good. Amen. So we're going to have our opening selection from our worship team. Then we will have our morning scripture by Minister Graves. And then we will have our morning prayer and prayer over our communion by Minister Wright. So we ask you to just get into the service today and let's lift up the name of the Lord. Amen. He took the cup, saying, 
This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So, so then, whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink from the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. That is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. But if we were more discerning with regard to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, when we are judged in this way by the Lord, we are being disciplined so that we will not we will not be finally condemned with the world. So then, my brothers and sisters, when you gather to eat, you should all eat together. Anyone who is hungry should eat something at home, so that when you meet together, it may not result in judgment. And when I come, I will give further directions. God, what is blessed. Amen. Let us pray. Father, we come before this throne of grace this day, Lord God, giving you praise, glory, and honor for another day, Father God. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord God, because you are, Father God, the King of kings and Lord of lords. Father, we thank you because you are, Father God, Jehovah Shalom. You are peace, Lord God. Father God, we thank you because you are Jehovah to second you. You are righteousness, Lord God. And Father God, we give you praise, Father God, because you are El Elyon, the most high God. And Father God, we come before you this day, Father God, asking you to forgive us of our sins, Father God. Things we may have said, done, thought about that was not pleasing to you, Lord God. And Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come because we depend solely upon you, Lord God. And Father God, we asking you, Lord God, to help us to be obedient to your word, Lord God. Obedient to your ways, Lord God. Because Father God, we know, Father God, that your will is your way and your way is your will, Lord God. And Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you this day, Lord God. Asking you, Lord God, to be a shield of protection all around us, Lord God. Father God, we asking you, Lord God, let the blood of Jesus cover this property, Lord God. Cover each and every one of us, Lord God. Father Father God, because no weapon formed against us shall prosper, and every tongue that rises up against us, we shall condemn, because you said this is the heritage of the servants of God, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. And Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, Lord God, we're asking you to stop by, Father God, every home, Father God, that's represented here. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, you know what they stand in the need of, Lord God. And so, Father God, if it's sickness in the homes, Lord God, we're asking you, Lord God, to stop by, Lord God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, touch them, Lord God in the bodies, Lord God. You know what they stand in the need of, Lord God. Father God, it is intestinal problems, Lord God. Do it for them right now, Lord God. Father God, it is blood problems, Lord God. Father God, let your blood flow through their veins, Lord God. Father God, in the, in the name of Jesus, a heart problems, Lord God. Liver, pancreatic disease, Lord God. So, Father God, we ask you to touch now, Lord God. Father God, regenerate, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Restore to them that health, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, why you stopping by, Father God, stop by the hospitals, the nursing homes, the prisons, and the mental institutes, Lord God. Touch your people, Lord God. Father God, those that are dealing with mind sicknesses, Lord God, we know you said in your word, Father God, let the mind of Christ Jesus be also in them, Lord God. Mm -hmm. Father God, those, Father God, that's in the nursing home, in the prisons, Father God, I'm asking you, Father God, to help them to be treated like they're supposed to be, Lord God. And Father God, those that are in prison, Lord God, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm asking you to free their minds, Lord God. Free them, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, and help them to call upon you, Lord God, and ask you, asking, and asking, what must I do to be saved? And Father God, why you're doing that, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus? Lord God. We asking you, Father God, to bless our kids as they get ready to go back into the schools, Lord God. Father God, cover them in your blood, Lord God. Oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. And now I'm asking you to take over this service, Lord God. Have thou no way, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, anoint our pastor afresh, Lord God. As she stand before your people to give them what thus says the Lord. And Father God, for that we said thank you, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus. And Father God, we're asking you to bless this communion, Lord God. Turn it from a common to a spiritual use, Lord God. And Father God, as we take this communion, Lord God, we're asking you, Lord God, to help us to examine ourselves, Lord God. In the mighty name of Jesus, we ask it all and believe that it is done. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and said, take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Let us all eat together. And afterwards, he took the cup. He said, this cup is a new covenant of my blood. As often as you drink it, drink in remembrance of me. The devil don't get no glory here. Amen. Amen. We glorify God today. Come on and let's lift him up for what he did for us. The shedding of his blood for the remission of our sins. Amen. Amen. So I got a couple of things I want to um, remind everyone. All right, we want to remind everyone that uh, COVID cases are increasing again. And since these cases are rising and we're starting to see deaths again, we need to make sure that we keep this stuff in mind as we go about our day to day uh, so that we can maintain our safety and the safety of our families as well. So I want to remind everyone when you are out here, when you get out to go and, and fellowship with one another to talk, please make sure that you are wearing your mask during that time. Um, and for the time being, we will continue to be outside um, until the Lord says otherwise. And I, I want you to try to be understanding of that fact. This is for your safety. There's so many conflicting uh, stories out there right now. In one moment, they tell you, well, if you get vaccinated, you can't get COVID. Then you got people who say, well, the vaccinated people is the ones that's getting COVID. Then they say, well, the vaccinated people are spreading COVID. Then they say the unvaccinated, whatever the case is, it doesn't matter what they say. God is still God. And we need to make sure that we're doing our part. Wear your mask, wash your hands, socially distance. They say when you're outside, you're better. So we're going to stay outside for a while, okay? Amen. So I ask you to, you know, be patient. Don't get ahead of what God is doing. Don't allow other people to tell you, well, this place is doing it and that place is doing it. But guess what? My mama used to tell us, well, if they jump off the bridge, you're going to jump too? Nope. So we've got to keep that in mind and we make sure that we do what's going to keep us and our people safe. Amen. So right here, I want to also remind you all of um, that we were talking about our uh, um, homecoming, excuse me, homecoming and family and friends day. We're going to postpone that for now. We will revisit that later. Uh, again, it's not safe right now to do that. Uh, homecoming and family and friends, we usually get out together. We sit around, we eat fish and hamburgers, hot dogs, laugh, and the children play. We are not able to do that at this time. But when the time comes, we will come together and celebrate one another. We want to remind you to come out on Sunday mornings for our Sunday schools and on Wednesday nights. Join us for Bible study via Zoom. You can call in or you can log in. And please continue to pray for all of the sick and shut-in and the bereaved families. Amen. We're going to turn it over now to our worship team.
will hear your cry. Come on and turn in your Bibles, if you will, to John chapter 2. John chapter 2. We're going to read the first 11 verses. And I'm going to be reading out of the New International Version. The Gospel of John, chapter 2, verses 1 through 11. And I'm reading the NIV version. On the third day, a wedding took place at Cana in Galilee. Jesus' mother was there, and Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine was gone, Jesus' mother said to him, they have no more wine. Woman, why do you involve me? Jesus replied, my hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Nearby stood six stone water jars, the kind that used by the Jews for ceremonial washing, each holding from 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus said to the servants, fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, now draw some out and take it to the master of the banquet. They did so, and the master of the banquet tasted the water that had been turned into wine. He did not realize where it had come from. Though the servants who had drawn the water knew. Then he called the bridegroom aside and said, everyone brings out the choice wine first and then the cheaper wine after the guests have had too much to drink. But you have saved the best till now. What Jesus did here in Cana of Galilee was the first of the signs through which he revealed his glory and his disciples believed in him. Let us go to God in prayer. Father, we come to you right now in the mighty name of Jesus. First of all, God, we say thank you. We thank you, God, for this opportunity to come together and worship. We thank you, Lord God, for this word that you have given for today. Help us, Lord God, to not only be hearers of your word, but to become doers of your word. Help us, Lord God, to obey you in everything you tell us to do. Father, we thank you and we praise you for it. It is in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. So I want to pull out of this, I'm going to talk about the whole thing, but I want to pull out verse 5. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. And I, we're going to talk on the subject, do what Jesus tells you to do. Do what Jesus tells you to do. Um, I've shared with you all before how a lot of times on my way to work, I put the um, scriptures on in the car and let it play to me. And on last Monday morning, on my way to work, I started listening to John 2. When I got to work, uh, I turned it back on and I listened to it again. And then throughout that day, I continued to recite Mary's words. Do whatever he tells you. Those words, they stuck with me throughout the re remainder of the week. If you were on Bible study Wednesday night, you know that Minister Richard Smith, he taught a Bible study lesson on obeying Jesus. And he was talking about how we have to obey him at all costs. We can't let anybody cause us to not obey Jesus. And then the subject of obedience was continued this morning in Sunday school as Minister Wright taught on obedience using Jonah as an example of what can happen when we are disobedient to God and what happens when we walk in obedience to God. Um, this, the Apostle John, he wrote what we call the Gospel of John, and he gives his accounts of the life of Jesus. And his main focus is on showing that Jesus is God and he is man. His, he's showing us that Jesus came in the flesh he still was revealing his divinity along with his humanity. Our, our text today covers the first miracle of Jesus. John is the only one who gives this, he records this. He's talking about, he says about this wedding and how Jesus and his disciples attended the wedding in the town of Cana. Some, sometime after they arrived, then Jesus' mother Mary came to him and let him know that they had run out of wine. 
He was letting her know that this is not my time, but she knew that she knew who her child was. And, and so she took that problem to Jesus, and, and then she told them, instead of even replying back to him, he, she said, do whatever he tells you to do. Uh, the servants may have been confused by Jesus' methods or of solving the problem. They have maybe even been doubtful that he could solve the problem. I'm sure they're like, why they go to that man? What is he going to do for them? But in spite of that, they obeyed his command, and in doing so, they witnessed a miracle. I want you to understand today that Jesus is the only one who can solve the problems that we face. We may not always understand his timing. We may not understand his methods. But when we take it to him, we can trust and believe that he can work a miracle in our lives. Mary told the servants, do whatever he tells you. She didn't say do some things. She said whatever he tells you to do it. She didn't tell them to weigh what Jesus was going to tell them. She didn't tell them to check and see if it fits into their logic or not. She said, do whatever he tells you. I, I wanna take, uh, want you to take an honest look at yourself right now. How often do you do what Jesus tells you to do? How often do you obey God's word? How often do you submit to his will for your life? Well, truth is, too often we try to give excuses and explanations as to why we want to do things our own way instead of obeying God to work, at, uh, work in our lives, instead of obeying him and relying on him. If we do that, then he's able to work on us, he's able to work in us, and he will work through us. Uh, just as Jesus had simple instructions for those servants, he has instructions for us as his followers today. He will provide us with guidance and he will give us direction, but it's up to us to obey him. See, this means that when he speaks, we must listen. It means when he gives directions, we must move and follow them. When we avail ourselves to the will of God, then Jesus will speak to us personally and we will see him move in our lives. Uh, Jesus had a specific task for these servants. Uh, once, once Mary told him, said, uh, do whatever he tells you. The Bible tells us that standing nearby, there were six stone water jars that were used for ceremonial washing. And, and they could hold 20 to 30 gallons in each. And Jesus gave a simple, simple task to them. Fill the jars with water. That's all he told them to do. Fill it with water. And then when the jars were filled, all he said was, now dip some out and take it to the master of the ceremonies. So the servants followed his instructions. I want you to know today that when you have that relationship with the Savior, when, when he tells you to do something, he lets us know that what he would have us to do, and he, then we, we got to make sure that we are doing it. I want to remind you that whatever his plans are for your life, you can trust him and you should do whatever he tells you. See, those servants, they just went and filled those pots with water. They, he didn't do anything else over it. He didn't say, say a prayer over it. He just said, fill the pots. Now, draw some out. We would be standing there. Some of us, if truth be told, we'd be standing there. But I, I mean, you said draw it out, but there's nothing in here but water. Do whatever he tells you to do. See, those are the ways that we miss our blessing. Because we're trying to figure out how it's going to be done. And we're trying to get it done in our way. But he said, fill the pots. Draw some out. But Lord, it's still got water in it. Fill the pots and draw some out. We've got to make sure that we're listening to, uh, to him. He speaks to us clearly. Through his holy word. He's still giving us stuff today. He talks to us through the Bible. And we need to make sure that we're obeying what he says. He speaks to us also through the Holy Spirit. He lets us know that, you know, when we should do things and when we should not. If you think about it, for example, if we look in Acts, we'll see when Paul wanted to go to Asia. And he had the best intentions, but the Holy Spirit let him know, don't go there. But he sent him somewhere else instead. So what I'm trying to get you to know today is that the Holy Spirit will show you where to go, what to do. He'll show you where not to go and what not to do. 
And when you do what God is telling you to do, you'll see him move in your life. Uh, Jesus is still speaking to us. He's speaking to us and he's working things for our good and he will never lead us in the wrong direction. So we need to do whatever he says. Uh, when we look back at our text, we see once they did what they did and they, they obeyed those simple instructions, the servants witnessed his first public miracle. This was the beginning of miracles that showed his glory and it caused his disciples to believe in him. And because the servants were obedient to him, they benefited from his work as well. Uh, I want you to know that Jesus will use any one of us for his purpose so that he will receive the glory. He, his call on our lives is for his glory. The task that he has given you is to accomplish his glory. Everything that he would have for us is for his glory. And when we do things, when we obey him, he works in us and he works through us. He is Lord. And we've got to learn to understand that. We must listen to him and do whatever he says to do. Uh, when we look again, we notice that the servants, they did not delay. They didn't question him. They didn't. They immediately followed his directions, doing whatever he said to do. This means that we obey God without questioning him, without saying, but Lord, I want to do this. But Lord, I want to do that. It means that when he says, I want you to do this, we say, yes, Lord. He told them to fill the water pots. And they did it. He said, draw some out and take it to the master. And they did it. And then when it happened, it was the best wine. See, I want you to know that Jesus gave clear instructions to obey. He told them to fill the pots. He told them to draw out the wine. He told them to do these things. And they did not know what he was going to do. They didn't know how he was going to do it. But all they knew was that they needed to do what he told them to do. And I want you to know today that there will be times and there will be situations where we may not know what God is doing and why he's doing it that way and how he's going to accomplish it. But I want you to know today that if we trust him and we obey his commands, we will see God work miracles in our lives. Yes, his method and his motivation is all his prerogative. It's not up to us to determine how God should do things. So I ask you today, what is it that he's telling you to do? Whatever it is, it's time for you to do it. I want to know, are you willing to do what God has called you to do today? You got to remember that we ought to obey God rather than men. So I say to you, do whatever he tells you to do. Have faith in him and do not doubt. Watch God work a miracle in your life. Will you submit to his will and his way for you? Will you watch him move on your behalf? What is it that he's giving you to do? And why are you sitting down on it? Why don't you get up and say, Lord, here I am. Take me, Lord God. Watch me, Lord God. Use me for your glory. I'm going to submit to your will, God. What is he telling you to do? What's stopping you from obeying him? Is it your pride? Is it fear? Is it stubbornness? What's stopping you from obeying God? Is it your dislike for people that's stopping you from obeying God? You got to remember that people don't have a heaven nor a hell to put you in. So you don't have to worry about people and what they say and what they think. You got to worry about what does God say and what does God think? What is my assignment from the Lord? What is it that God would have me to do? And we've got to remember to submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from us. We've got to do what God told us to do. Too often we allow ourselves to draw back from God. Come on, y'all. We allow ourselves to draw back from God because of people. We allow our past to keep us from moving forward in the Lord. We allow our own little fears and, and our, because we know that we've all had our shortcomings and failures and we'll say, well, I'm not fit to do it. Well, truth is, none of us are fit in our own. But because of his righteousness, because we enter into relationship with him, when we're faithful to him, 
He will be faithful to us. When he is, when he tells us to do something, we've got to do it. Will you do that today? Some of you may say, I don't know what, what it is we would have you to do. Open up your Bible. That tells you everything that God would have you to do. He said, forgive. Forgive people. We're supposed to forgive those who have done us wrong. That's in the word he told us to do it. He said, love one another. That's in the word he told us to do it. We even got to love our enemies. That's in the word Jesus told us to do it. And I don't know about you today, but I want to let you, I want to say this. For me, I ain't let nobody, nobody, I don't care what relationship, I ain't let nobody block me from my God. Amen. Amen. I submit to his will and I suggest that we all take a good look at ourselves and we make sure that we put God in control. We submit our will to his will. Come on worship team. into thinking that I've got to wait until I get myself together. I've got to wait until I get things right. None of us will ever make it if we waited on that. What we have to do first is just submit to him. So I ask you today to just accept Jesus as Lord and Savior of your life. And all you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and you shall be saved. So we say right now, all you got to do is repeat after me. Father, I come to you right now. I repent of my sins, Lord God. I realize that I need your grace. Father, I ask you right now to come into my heart. I pray, Lord God, right now and confess that Jesus is Lord. And Lord, not only do I confess that I believe in my heart, that you raised him from the dead. So, Father, I thank you right now for salvation that you have provided through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. So those who have prayer requests at this time, you may either lift your hands out of your car or if you would like to step outside of your cars with your hands lifted, we're going to go before the Lord in prayer 
and we're going to pray for your situations. I'm going to ask Evangelist Smith if she will lead the prayer today. Heavenly Father, we come, Lord God, in the precious name of Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, for your life, your love and your, your concern for us. We thank you, Lord God, for the word that you've allowed to go forth on this morning. And Father, we pray that that word was food to our spirit, Lord God. It was food to our soul, Lord God. And we thank you, Lord God, how you've allowed that word to settle down on our hearts, Lord God, that we might not sin against you. Father, we ask for forgiveness of anything we said or done that's not pleasing in your sight. And Father, we ask you, Lord God, to move on the altar of our hearts, Lord God. Lord God. And Father, as we lift our hands unto you today, Lord God, we ask you to meet every need that is across this park, my Father. We don't know what every situation is, Lord God, but we know that you see all and you know all, Father. So as you see their situation and you see their hands lifted up, Lord God, we ask you to make a way out of no way, Lord God. We ask you to do things, Lord God, that they've never seen before. And we ask you, Lord God, to just have your way in the midst of their situation. God, we ask you to mend broken relationships. We ask you to mend broken uh, lives, Lord God. We ask you to fix financial situations, Father. We ask you to touch the children. We, we ask you to touch the husbands and the wives, Lord God. We ask you to look on those that are sick in their body, Father. We ask you to just have mercy on them today, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Those that are standing in proxy for somebody else in their situation. Lord God, we don't ask you to just rest on them, Lord God. We ask you to move about those that are connected to the people that are lifting up their hands to you, Lord God. We ask you, Lord God, to just be merciful in every situation, God. Anoint us, God, to speak your word in everything that we do. Help us, Lord God, to as we walk, Lord God, we will walk giving you glory. We will begin to let the glory of God come out of our, out of our mouth. And Lord God, everything that we begin to touch will be blessed by you, Lord God. We ask you, Father, to just have mercy, God, in every situation, Lord God. Begin to stir up the spirit of God that is within us, Lord God. Help us to not forget about you. But, Lord God, help us to remember you in every situation. Lord God, when we see things that are corrupt, Father, help us to see things as you see it. And help us begin to glorify God for what is about to take place. Because we know, God, nothing catches you unaware. And you already know what the outcome is going to be. So, Lord God, we ask you to just go ahead and do your work, Lord God. Work on us, Lord God. As we sung the song this morning, work on us, Lord God. Help people to see you in our lives, Father. It's not about us, but it's all about and Lord God, we'll continue to glorify your name in every situation, Lord God. In our sickness, we will glorify you. In our, in our hard times, God, we will glorify you. Because, Lord God, we know that you are still in charge of our lives. And Father, we thank you right now in the name of Jesus. And we ask you, Lord God, to go before us, stand behind us, Lord God. Be on every leaning side. And we just ask you to lift us up wherever we're leaning, Lord God. And just help us to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Now, Father, we thank you for all that you've done, all that you're going to do, Lord God. And we're looking for good things to come out of the report that you have been God over somebody's life. Heal, deliver, set free in the name of Jesus. And we'll continue to bless your name. It's in the precious name of Jesus. We do thank you for it all. Amen. 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 Come on and let's give God glory. Amen. God is still in charge of our lives. Yes, amen. So we're going to get ready to dismiss. We pray that you will continue to ponder this word over the coming week. And as you find yourself uh, in opportunities and situations where you can do what God has told you to do, do it. Just do it like Nike. You know, some of y'all like to wear Nike, so we'll put it in them terms. Just do it. If he say pray for somebody, just do it. Yes. If he say bless somebody, yes. just do it. If he says go somewhere, just do yes. it. If he says make a call, just do it. Whatever it is, just do it. Yes. And watch what God does in your life because you obey him. So let's get ready to go home. Father, we thank you right now, Lord God, for this service on today. We thank you for every person that is here. We pray, Lord God, that as we leave this place on today, that we will arrive at our next destination and find everything well. It's in the mighty name of Jesus we do pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.